my channel. I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and today's video will be done entirely in ASMR style. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the soothing sounds of my whispers and scratches against the wind filter. <laughs> What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek. And today, we are not doing an ASMR video. Thank God, that sound just drives me crazy. But I guess if there were enough of you ASMR files out there, that I might be obliged to do one in the future. But that's not today. Today, we've got much more important things to talk about. We can't do it ASMR style. We're talking about the three announcements that came hand in hand with the FAA's Remote ID final rule. My last video, we talked about Remote ID and how that will be implemented in 2023. You will be required to broadcast a Remote ID signal from your drone as long as you're flying a drone that is 250 grams or more. Anything underneath that, that includes the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Mini Two, you will not need to broadcast remote ID because they are 249 grams and that is below the threshold that the FAA has set. That takes place in 2023. If you want to learn more about that, watch my previous video where I get into a little bit more detail about that. Today, we are talking about those three additional rule changes. Two, as it applies to how you operate your drone and one, as it applies to how you attain and then maintain your part 107 certificate. So let's jump into it with our two rule changes that have to do with operation of your drone. In the past, you had to file for a waiver in order to fly over groups of people and to fly at night as a commercial pilot. You no longer have to do that once these rules take effect, which is 60 days from the publication date, which is happening this month if it hasn't already happened in January. So look forward to not having to file for a waiver to either fly over people or at night in the very near future. We're looking at about March or April, as long as that publication has either already happened in January or is going to happen before the end of this month. Now, this doesn't come without its caveats. There are some strings attached to this. You can't just go out like some Maverick cowboy and fly your drone over people and at nighttime as a commercial pilot without any regard to any type of rules. For instance, let's start with flying over people. The FAA has now put drones into four different categories. Let's talk about those right now before we go any further. But first, we need a whiteboard. So these category definitions are pulled directly from the FAA's outline of what it takes to fly over crowds of people. And let me add, they are aptly named. Category one is an SUAS less than 0.55 pounds, that's less than 250 grams, including its payload with no exposed rotating parts that would lacerate human skin. Category two, an SUAS that must not cause injury to a human being that is equivalent to or greater than the severity of injury caused by the transfer of 11 foot pounds of kinetic energy upon impact from a rigid object. The SUAS must also not contain exposed rotating parts that could lacerate human skin upon impact and is free of general safety defects. Category three, an SUAS that must not cause injury to a human being that is equivalent to or greater than the severity of injury caused by the transfer of 25 five foot pounds of kinetic energy upon impact from a rigid object. The SUAS must also not contain exposed rotating parts that could lacerate human skin upon impact and is free of general safety defects. Before we move on to category four, the final category in this breakdown, I do want to talk about the foot pounds of kinetic energy and where your drone might fall in these categories. So let's go back to the whiteboard. For starters, to calculate mass, velocity, and energy, we need three different equations, all of which are related in some way. To calculate mass, we need two times energy over velocity squared. To calculate velocity, we need the square root of two times energy over mass. And to calculate energy, we need one half times mass times velocity squared. Now, this is gonna be pretty easy and eliminates a lot of steps in figuring out some of the figures that we need in order to figure out where your drone falls in these categories. We know the mass of our drone and the two energy thresholds for category two 
and Category 3. I'll make it even easier for Mavic 2 Pro owners as the Mavic 2 Pro is 1.62 pounds. That's the drone's mass. If you have a different drone, you're going to have to look up the weight if you don't know it off the top of your head and plug that in here. In terms of energy, we know that Category 2 has a threshold of 11 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, and Category 3 has a threshold of 25 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. So since we have these three figures, the last thing we need to figure out is the velocity at which they would need to fall from the sky in order to deliver that level of energy. Again, you'll see velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times energy over mass. So let's go ahead and plug our figures in for the category two threshold. The equation would read the square root of two times 11, which is the number of foot pounds of kinetic energy that category two's threshold is set at over the mass of the drone, which is 1.62 pounds for the Mavic 2 Pro. Now I'm no math wizard here, but this does equate out to 14.252 miles per hour. That's the rate at which the drone would need to fall from the sky in order to deliver 11 foot pounds of kinetic energy. Before we move on and figure out how fast the Mavic 2 Pro would actually fall out of the sky when driven by gravity, let's go ahead and figure out our category three velocity. So we'll use that same equation. It's the square root of two times the energy, which in this case is 25 over mass, which is still 1.62. And for category three, it would need to fall at a velocity of 21.486 miles per hour. So keep those two numbers in mind. That's the velocity that we have set. Okay, so now that we have all of that figured out, we are in the home stretch. We just need to do one more equation that takes into account A, air friction, and B, the gravitational force bringing something back down to Earth. So admittedly, I am no math wizard. This is where I had to actually turn to a calculator resource on the internet. So keep that in mind when we calculate this out. And also keep in mind that again, I am no math wizard. So I may have done something wrong here that threw this whole thing off. I've double and triple checked my work. So hopefully that means I'm competent enough to present this to you as factually accurate. If not, please let me know down in the comments below and that will set me straight and allow other people to see that I am in fact an imbecile. So there are two numbers that you don't have at home yet, but I do have here that I'm going to share with you now. Air resistance is roughly 0.24 kilograms per meter. That would roughly equate out to 1.735 pounds per foot, but we're gonna keep it in kilograms per meter because that's how I see it pretty much everywhere else. The other number that I have is Earth's gravity. This is the force at which something falls to the Earth in a total free fall. That's 9.806 meters per second squared. That also equates out to 32.170 feet per second. Again, we're going to keep those two numbers in the metric system because that is how they are most commonly used in these calculations. But we're gonna keep our other numbers in pounds and feet, the imperial system, just for consistency's sake. Plus the calculator does all the conversion work, so I don't really need to do all that. So when we look at mass, again, the Mavic 2 Pro is 1.62 pounds. This next figure is the height. Now this is going to change depending upon the operation of your flight. You may be flying low to the ground, you may be flying high to the ground. Either way, this will change every time you fly, so keep that in mind. What I'd recommend doing is figuring out the maximum allowable height you're allowed to fly in order to stay under the threshold of either 11 foot-pounds of kinetic energy or 25 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. We'll start at 400 feet above ground level. That's the FAA's maximum allowable height for drone operations unless there's a special exception which is few and far between. So we have 1.62 pounds in the weight of the drone. We've got 400 feet for the free fall distance. The air resistance again is 0.24 kilograms per meter and gravity is 9.806 meters per second squared. Again, I am no math wizard, but this is what the calculator online gave me after I plugged all of these numbers in. The total time in free fall that the drone will spend would be 22.637 seconds. And the free fall velocity is 12.257 miles per hour. Now, what does this number tell us? It tells us that the Mavic 2 Pro does fall into category two for drone operations when it's at 400 feet. Because in order to deliver 11 foot pounds of kinetic energy, the drone would need to be falling at 14 miles an hour. In this figure, we found out that from 400 feet, 
at 1.62 pounds, the Mavic 2 Pro would fall at 12 miles an hour. I'm not going to go through to see how fast it would need to fly in order to hit category two and category three, but now you have the information that you need. And if you need for any reason, any resources or online tools to help you calculate whether or not your drone falls into category two or category three, and you're not a math wizard, much like myself, I'm gonna go ahead and link the calculators I used below in the video description. And the final category is category four which is an SUAS with an airworthiness certificate issued under part 21 of FAA regulations. The UAS must be operated within limitations specified by the approved flight manual or as otherwise specified by an administrator. Now, keeping all of that information in mind, each category of drone can fly over people with its own special subset of rules. And in some cases, it may not be allowed to fly over people at all. It largely depends upon what category your drone falls into. For instance, let's break this down. Category one drones can fly over people and open air assemblies as long as they are able to comply with the remote ID requirements established by the FAA's remote ID final rule. Yeah, remote ID does play a role in this. Category two drones must also comply with the remote ID requirements, but the operator of the drone must also provide a means of compliance and a declaration of compliance. This is not a waiver, it's a declaration that must be formally made before the flight takes place. So essentially what you need to do is just let the FAA know how you're going to stay in compliance while flying over the crowds of people and a formal declaration that you will stay compliant with the FAA's regulations as it relates to flying over those people. On to the next one, category three drones may not fly over open air assemblies of people in any situation. However, they may operate over smaller groups of people or people that are not assembled together in a confined space as long as it meets one of the following conditions. The operation is within a closed or restricted access site and all people in that area are notified that an SUAS will be flying over them. Or the SUAS will not maintain sustained flight over a person unless they are directly participating in the operation of said aircraft or are located under a covered structure or inside a stationary vehicle that can provide reasonable protection from a falling SUAS. Category four drones have their own set of rules and checklists for flying over crowds of people. However, I'm not going to get into that because if you're flying a category four drone, you have your part 21, which means you probably know more than I do. And it means you're probably also well studied on what you need to do in order to operate over a group of people and your SUAS in general. Keep in mind, the final rule for flying over people takes effect 60 days after the publication of the rule. Again, that's supposed to happen this month if it hasn't already at the time of recording. I don't know that it's been published, but once it is, you have to wait 60 days before you can actually take advantage of the new rule change. That does it for flying over people. Let's move on to daylight operations. You no longer have to file a waiver to fly at nighttime with the FAA if you fly part 107. Thank God, because there are so many clients that want me and other drone pilots that I know to fly at night, but getting a waiver was such a giant pain in the ass because A, filling the waiver out took what seemed like forever because it was just so repetitive and so completely focused and detail oriented. And somebody like me doesn't do well in that environment. So it was always difficult for me to actually fill out the waiver. And then you had to wait weeks, even months for the FAA to approve it. It just wasn't an efficient process. And I'm glad that they finally did away with it because nighttime operation is maybe one of my most popular requests from clients. However, this doesn't come without its strings attached either. Luckily for us, we're very familiar with these strings. So in order to operate at night, you need to meet two conditions. First, remote pilots in command must complete either the updated initial test or the updated recurrent online training, we'll get to that in a moment, prior to conducting a night operation. Additionally, the SUAS used in the operation must be equipped with anti-collision lights that can be seen from three statute miles and have a flash rate sufficient to avoid collision. Anti-collision lights must be operational upon launch and throughout the duration of the flight. Now, one piece of maybe unpleasant news to depending upon where you stand on this particular issue, you must, when you're operating your drone, have your part 107 certificate and a form of identification. When you're flying commercially, you are required to have these two things while you're flying. Why is that? 
It's because the FAA has expanded upon which law enforcement agencies can request and are privileged to access to your remote pilot certificate and a form of identification while you're flying your drone. Previously, the only agencies that could request and were privileged to your remote pilot certificate and a form of identification were the FAA, TSA, and the NTSB. That has now been expanded to include federal, state, and local law enforcement. So that means anybody ranging from an FBI or CIA agent all the way down to a local police officer can request your remote pilot certificate and a form of identification while you're flying, and you must comply and provide those two documents to them. Otherwise, you may be subject to legal action for flying outside of FAA regulation. Now, I know that might have ruffled your feathers just a little bit, but that's just one of the negative developments that's come with all of these new rule changes. That goes hand in hand with remote ID in terms of what's bad, but it's a small sacrifice to make for all of the positives that we're getting out of this. I don't mind showing my remote pilot certificate and my ID to somebody when I'm flying my drone, especially when it's in a public space and there are a lot of people and buildings and cars nearby. I totally understand and I'm willing to comply when somebody requests that type of information from me. Now, I don't wanna leave you on a sour note with this video. It's not all doom and gloom. We've got two big positives with flying over people and flying at night without waivers. There's one more positive I want to leave you with and if you're a part 107 pilot, you're going to particularly like this change in the rules. There has been a change with how you attain and then maintain your part 107 certificate. You still have to go to a certified testing center and take the initial knowledge exam with the updated information regarding flying over people and flying at night. That will still be required and you'll still be required to pay the fee to take the test. However, after that, in order to maintain your part 107 certificate, all you need to do is get online and take an online training course regarding part 107 information. This will have the updated information again regarding flying over people and flying at night. And aside from not having to schedule a test or actually leave your house to go take the test, the sweet deal on this is it costs you absolutely nothing. The online training course that you take every two years is required, but it costs nothing to you, which is a gigantic victory. Now, again, $150 every two years, not gonna break the piggy bank for most of us, but it was a real pain in the ass to have to account for that every two years. And honestly, it was a little money grubbing on the FAA's part. I know you have to pay to renew your driver's license, but it's like 30 bucks, $150 for real. But we no longer have to deal with that. That part of all of this is over. All we have to do is take our initial knowledge test, which if you have your part 107, you've already done. And moving forward, all you have to do is get online and take the online training course for part 107 every two years. Really, really easing the burden on commercial pilots. What do you think of all these changes? Did I get something right that you really liked or did I get something wrong and you wanna correct me? Let me know down in the comments below. I really appreciate all feedback. Just try to keep it constructive. A guy can only take so much negativity. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up icon down below. It really helps me out. And if you really, really liked this video and you think that my channel's for you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're still on the quest to 1,000 subscribers and we are closer than we've ever been before. So your help is greatly appreciated. If you're already subscribed to my channel, let two friends know that you think would be interested in my content to come here and subscribe. As I've said over and over and over again, it helps me so much and it is so greatly appreciated. And if you think I got everything right and this is helpful content, it could be helpful to other drone pilots out there, go ahead and share this video to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you feel most comfortable. As you've become accustomed, last thing before I wrap everything up guys, is our subscriber shout out. Today, I'm shouting out Ants Drones on YouTube. Now, if you like my channel, you'll like Anthony's channel as well. He does an awesome job demonstrating the power of his Mavic 2 Pro and other drones that he flies as well. And he also does some great tutorials on how to edit your multimedia after you've captured it with your drone. He has some amazing content. I would highly recommend you subscribe to his channel and support him as he's already broken the 1000 subscriber threshold. So right now it's all about watch time for him. He's gotta get eyes on his videos and you could help him out greatly by giving him just a few minutes of your day and learning something new from his channel. Ants Drones on YouTube. I'll link his profile in the description below. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek and I am out of here.